On our short trip to the nature, the universe seemed to reiterate the importance and the indispensability of the mother nature for the very existence of mankind. Bringing back the soothing memories of our childhood of having to breathe, smell and savour the fresh and clean air which now in the cities has become an impossibility. Thinking of why must we want to return to our corrupt city lives, especially now with the outbreak of the coronavirus. My husband and I wondered as to what impact could this virus have on environment, be it negative or positive. With the outbreak of this virus, it seems like the words in Bible have come to life. It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. In other words, do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. We believe it is the revenge, the fury of nature that has been unleashed on humans for hurting and bruising it to such an extent that it became unbearable for her. Humans, in the name of evolution and success, have never feared to use the earth brutally. Our resources have been misused so extensively that this virus seems to be like a warning in disguise. We agree with many campaigners who say that governments must act with the same urgency on climate as on the coronavirus. The health crisis is actually reducing carbon emissions more than any policy. The deadly virus outbreak, which has already killed almost 10,000 people and infected more than 235,000, has alarmed the world. However, on the other hand, it has shown how political and corporate leaders can take radical emergency measures on the advice of scientists to protect human well-being. On the advice of health authorities, the governments across the world are continuously imposing preventive measures because of which millions of people are avoiding school journeys, shopping runs and office commutes. Tens of thousands of flights have been cancelled. Across much of central China, factories have been closed with knock-on effects around the world. China, the source of the disease and the world's largest CO2 emitter, contributes 30% of world's CO2 emissions annually. It has seen a hefty drop of nearly 25% in its CO2 emission. Similarly, such drops are expected to be seen in other countries as well. This slowdown in emission could certainly buy time for climate action, but that will only be of use if it inspires a long-term behavioural change at individual, business and government level. Though it is too early to know if coronavirus will push global CO2 emissions onto the downward path that is needed if the world is to have any hope of keeping global heating to a relatively safe level of 1.5 Celsius above pre-industrial levels. That depends on how far the outbreak spreads and whether the economic effects are prolonged. COVID-19 seems to be an indirect outcome of the climate crisis. It is a deathly beginning of something worse that is yet to surface since humans have refused to pay heed and show any urgency to address the climate crisis and hence COVID-19 may be a corrective measure by the earth to protect and heal herself in the quickest way possible. It is extremely intriguing how the virus that has created so much panic and chaos in just a few weeks time has been dealt with such an urgency, whereas humans have always royally ignored the biggest problem, the climate change. Human attitude towards life depends on how the mind functions. Human beings, it seems, lack the communal will to address climate change because of the evolution of the brain. Humans are very bad at understanding statistical trends and long-term changes, says political psychologist Connor Sear. He further states, we have evolved to pay attention to immediate threats. We overestimate threats that are less likely but easier to remember, like terrorism, and underestimate more complex threats like climate change. Too much information seems to confuse and tire our brains, leading us to inaction or poor choices. Our brain has evolved to rapidly filter information and thus focuses on what is most immediately essential to our survival. Human mind prioritizes things according to what a human visualizes, how he comprehends it and finally acts, leading to an outcome that decides a person's general attitude towards life. Our perception is that the present is more important than the future. 
the focus on what might kill us, eat us or harm us now, not later. COVID-19 is a personal attack. One can see the immediate consequences and therefore humans are forced to take preventive and corrective measures. COVID-19 has ticked off like a bomb. It is current, undeniable and is a rapidly swelling threat. Each day brings forth novel cases which provide evidence of the direct consequence and these outcomes are quickly spreading and inching closer to home, whereas the threat of climate crisis that has been suggested for decades poses no direct or immediate threat, even though some evidences have been accumulated, but over years. The human activities in the past, and as they still continue, are definitely responsible for the climate crisis, yet one cannot provide a single strong evidence to prove our contribution in this disaster therefore giving it a very vague impression. It is noted that when governments realize there is an emergency, they act straight away with measures that commensurate with the threat. Political scientists have shown that governments tend to make concrete plans to address short-term concerns, but make only abstract plans to address long-term ones. In case of climate change, although many governments have declared it an emergency, most don't see it as an immediate threat to human life.